Well, that was a bit rootsy, wasn't it? Hot, hot and fresh from the kitchen, oh, mama me. rolling up body, every man in here wishing we're at Anderton's, Dorcodot UK. Happy days. Happy and, days, uh, always one of my favorite days of the month when Mr. Chapman comes in and graces <laughs> us with his presence. And I know that I'm gonna to get to play some cool guitars and pedals and amps for 48 hours. Well, thank you, sir. Um, Gretsch, Fred Gretsch. I'm not actually entirely sure Fred? how much Fred Gretsch. Fred Gretsch was a was was the guy that did the, the that started Gretsch um, when there was a lot of drums in the catalog, and I'm not entirely sure what the full story is. But at some point or other, he decided to focus on drums, and the guitars kind of went off and did something else. I don't know if, if he still gets a royalty every time. I'm not even sure if he's still alive. Probably not. Well, anyway, let's hope that he is alive <laughs> and that he makes some money, or his family does. Mm. But either way, these are great guitars. So these are a new addition to the range from uh, what Gretsch have been doing for the last couple of years called the Players Edition. So this is where they kind of take authentic Gretsch designs, so this would be a jet kind of design, but then tweak it to appeal to the modern player. So the first thing you notice when you pick this guitar up is that it's made of cotton wool. <laughs> and if you let go of it, it would just float off and what you really need is a piece of string attached to yourself so you don't lose it. But that's because it's a heavily, heavily chambered mahogany guitar. So chambered, in fact, that it really feels, you know, like probably a two thirds of the weight of a normal, a normal electric guitar, solid body electric guitar. Well, unusually for Gretsch, these are Japanese made. Well, that's, the, that's where the, um, the Pro Series stuff uh, so, so that's another weird one again and we've probably covered this in previous Gretsch videos but when they decided way back when in the 80s to sort of knock it might have even been the 70s but to knock the American stuff on the head uh, the deal was done to move production to to Japan and there's always been this dilemma because I've never met anybody that doesn't think that the Japanese stuff is made better than the old American stuff but then I've equally never met anybody that feels like the Japanese stuff has sort of pulls on the heartstrings in a way that the old American stuff does. So, well, I think it depends on whether it's a vintage or not. No, that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If it, you know, if it is an old <coughs> country gent from the you know the, the 50s or the 60s, um, the modern Japanese equivalent of that as a as a as a tool to yeah. to play music on is a better you know it'll stay in tune more. You can see it's nicely made, all that kind of stuff. But it doesn't have that sort of sense of heritage, if you like. That the anyway, you can't buy American Gretsch guitar. Actually, that's not true. There are some things where the Fender Custom Shop will will tool up to do yeah. sort of limited edition American Gretsch runs. But the, the vast majority of the Gretsch range is either from Japan in the Pro Series or from elsewhere in the Far East. You know, Indonesia, Korea, China, that kind of thing on the Electromatic series. <laughs> You know what I noticed about later. these guitars, playing them for the first time, is that they play really easily. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm the kind of person that doesn't find a Gretsch particularly like ergonomic or yeah. fitting to me. It's the kind of guitar that I normally have to fight a little bit with. Mm -hmm. But these, there's no fight. It's just it plays itself and that's great. I do love the arrows that point <laughs> to my nipple or infinity. I, I think that's kind of, you're the guy that the player series is aimed at. Yeah. Because you're not going to, you're it's never going, you gonna, like the Les Paul kind of thing? We do that a bit as well. Yeah, you're, you're never going to fall in love with an old Gretsch traditionally made guitar. And they, you know, you'll, you'll love the vibe of it and you'll go, oh, I'd love one of those. But you'll pick it up and go, oh, it's not really my kind of thing. But the player's editions should have slightly more modern feeling. Necks, um, again, things like weight relief, things that are important to modern players will, will be addressed. So I did might... fall in love with the Gretsch about a month and a half yeah, ago in a store. I was with Rabia hanging out and I was playing a signature model that had leather around the outside That's... for uh, Chet Atkins. Yeah. And it was unbelievably the, the big, good. The big circular leather kind of belt yeah. buckle guard It on looked the back. Yeah. kind of like, wow, that's really for a specific kind of thing. But my God, yeah. it played and sounded amazing. Well, look, so these are, uh, the, the model number for these is G for Gretsch 6228. 
and it's a, a single cut, um, as we've said, very lightweight chambered electric guitar. Um, two broad Tron pickups, which are not the pokiest kind of pickup that you'll play. So good for guys that want that perhaps slightly creamier, fatter sort of tone. Uh, hard tail, but with this very cool V-shaped tailpiece, which doesn't, I mean, I'm sure some people will talk about perhaps the way it changes the string tension over the bridge very, very minutely, but I think this is more an aesthetic thing than, than uh, any reason other than that. Uh, a completely mahogany body and neck with a flame maple top and an ebony fretboard locking tuners which is cool modern kind of feature really cool finishes too i don't know what you call this one but it when i first cadillac green when it was hung up because it's so flip-flop yeah i thought oh it looks a bit kind of boring and then when i picked it up and went whoa it's suddenly really cool there's some beautiful finishes on these mixture of solid <laughs> finishes and um flame finishes which uh rory i'm sure is displaying on the screen now and i'm enjoying these blood moon inlays <laughs> i think they're just beautiful so you've got again the gretsch i'm i'm I wouldn't say that necessarily this is a feature that I think is particularly better than uh, doing it the traditional way, but Gretsch guitars have always had this sort of dual volume system. So you've got two volumes here and a tone control, so sort of a la Les Pauli kind of vibe down here. But then you've got like another volume control here, which is the overall volume control. I guess if, if you're using a I don't really know why you do that because even it's if Les you're using a blend and you want to back it down, but it makes perfect on, sense. Even on a Les Paul, on a blend, if you take one of the pickups all the way out, it cuts changes the, whole the thing. tone, though, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree. So look, let's do some tones. We've got quite different setups yep. here. Shall I? I'll flick it to clean mode on Ooh. on my new amp. You might want to rescue your wireless pack as well. Oh yeah. Um, so here is a Gretsch <sighs> guitar, a G six two two eight into a clean Fender amp. <laughs> Just, just a beautiful clean tone. It's not, they're not, they're not so fierce these pickups that you can't get a nice clean sound out of them. You know, it's just I like it. Uh, I'm too far. I got that wrong, didn't I? These two are the volumes and that's the tone. I think I said these were the volumes, but anyway, so. So you find a tone that you like, and I'm sure Rob will go through his in a minute. Um, the neck is very comfortable. It's pretty narrow this way, not too thick depth wise. It just feels nice to play. I have, I'm having my first experience with a Hudson broadcast pedal. Very fuzzy um, and very popular. Uh, that was how. I was getting a lot, I wish I, it's an acquired taste that, isn't it? But I quite like it. It's good. Very fuzzy. Um, and then I was kind of left with a more conventional drive pedal from Mythos called the Herculean. <laughs> Lots of fun to be had there. What's that white pedal? Just some delay. Oh, uh, so it's a, it's a Keeley Caverns pedal, which I can... I wasn't using lots of delay, just a tiny bit at some points. Ooh, it's very nice. I like them. I think they're Tell really cool. The, I mean, you've got exactly the same guitar, just different colors. Yeah. So yeah, I dug out this uh, secondhand Boogie Mark V. Ooh. Sounds really nice. And uh, yeah, here's the neck pickup. Middle position. But let me crunch it up for you, because in my opinion, this is where it shines. <laughs> Bye. 
great. That sounds great. Now, uh, I'm going to upset some of you uh, with the pricing, but also probably impress some of you with the pricing. So, so a bit of everything then. A bit of everything, yeah. <laughs> so, so these guitars in the solid finishes uh, are going to cost you about nineteen hundred, and in the flame finishes about two thousand. Um, so I'm playing with my ass here because for fine. the third time today, this pack has fallen off my bum. To be honest with you, if you put me, you know, that close to your ass, I'd be doing everything to jump out the way as well. <laughs> but. Um, so, you know, money-wise, um, money-wise, think of this of like Gibson Les Paul traditional kind of dough. So, yeah. you know, I think it's it's good. Obviously, if you haven't got £2,000 or that's completely not the kind of price bracket that you're shopping in, I understand your disappointment. However, um, if you hold on to it, keep holding on to your guitar, they do make I, I mean, come on. an electromatic version of this guitar. It's not chambered, so it feels much the same sort of weight as a conventional guitar, but it's got the same kind of vibe with the electromatic versions of the pickups on it and the V-shape um, bridge and everything. And it's, and it's kind of... Made in Japan it's a, as well? No, 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 no. Electromatic is, these are Chinese. The electromatic are made all over the Far East, but these are designed to hit like a, you know, 400 quid kind of money as opposed See, to... See, what, what, what I was gonna say is that what you're paying for is, is place of origin. I mean, you're paying for Japanese build quality versus Chinese Yep. Build quality. And, you know, and parts and uh, materials and all that kind of stuff. But nonetheless, still a mighty fine sounding guitar for the money. And if I should have tuned this up beforehand, but if I tune this up now through speed tune. <laughs> That's why you should buy a Gretsch. I've been Rob Chapman. <laughs> oh, they're really nice. I know. I fell in love with these at the NAM show when we, we saw them the first time. It was like, oh man, this is, and I think I said in the, the NAM video, it's like, this is the first guitar that someone has gone, if you had to choose either a 2,000 pound Les Paul or one of these, what would you do? Hmm. And in the past, I've been like, every time, Les Paul, Les Paul, Les Paul. This was like, oh, please don't make me choose. Can I just have one of each? But they're, they're really nice. So anyway, look, final jam between me and Rob is gonna be me on, on the 400 quid G5220. Um, does it feel a lot differently again. or does it? Um, it fits, so the neck feels marginally wider. I, probably in the specs, it's like a millimeter, but you know what it's like, a millimeter yeah, yeah. feels quite a bit wider. Same sort of depth. Obviously we don't have the locking machine heads anymore. It's not chambered, it'll be a, uh, well actually it might be chambered a bit, but it's nothing like as light as these. Um, we'll have Far Eastern kind of versions of those pickups. So I'm not expecting to be um, like completely blown away by these guitars, but it's, well, Japan it's a, is in the Far a, East as well. Well, that's true. <laughs> it's a fifth, you know, it's a fifth of the price, and that's what you've got to try and kind of always remember. It's just, and it's not a fifth of the guitar, you know. So, well, should we play the same kind of thing so they can hear the difference in sound? I suppose perhaps we should. Yes, it's a good idea. <laughs>
Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting, and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.